Nowadays, if you want to install Linux, the process is pretty streamlined. You download an ISO from a website, generally from the distro's website, you stick it on a thumb drive, you plug it into your computer, and you're pretty much good. And then once the distro is installed, you can easily update your repos just by running a simple command. But this is still a relatively new phenomenon. It wasn't that long ago, and especially in those super early days of Linux, where you would install Linux from a CD that you either got in a magazine or got in the mail. Up until Ubuntu 11.04, you could contact Canonical and ask them for a free installation CD. But if they didn't do that, a lot of other distros would sell a CD at a relatively cheap price. Usually the price of the CD, the price to get it printed, and the price to send it out. But nowadays, most people can justify just downloading an ISO. Their internet is perfectly quick enough to do so. So you might think that practice is completely dead and a relic of the past. Well, it might be a relic, but it's certainly not of the past. This is one service I found, this is one of the more popular services called Shop Linux Online. And they will sell you actually up-to-date things. Like let's say, let's go and search for Ubuntu for example and see what we find. 20.04, 22.04, okay, wow, that's a current release. Let's go and find something like Arch Linux. This is an Arch Linux DVD for the latest ISO. And not just Linux, there's BSD on here as well. Let's say for example, OpenBSD, or NetBSD, or FreeBSD. Basically anything you could possibly want is going to be here. Not, you know, every single distro, but anything remotely popular is probably going to be listed here. Are they allowed to do this? Well, no one's stopping them, so <laughs> it's sort of just going to keep existing. And this is not the only service available that's doing exactly this. There's also the Linux DVD Center, the Linux DVD Shop, or the Linux Shop, whatever the name is supposed to be, they don't actually align, and a ton of others, all basically doing the exact same thing. But the reason why this one in particular caught my attention is a uh, a Reddit post that was making the rounds probably, I don't know, like a week or two ago. Debian 11.5 Full Archive. 19 DVDs. 19 DVDs to update your Debian repos. I have no idea who has the time to sit there and do that but surely someone does, otherwise they probably wouldn't list it. Now you might be wondering, why is there 19 DVDs? Why does this exist? How do they decide to go and split things up between the different DVDs? Well, that's actually very simple, because Debian actually offers these DVD images. What's in this directory? These are files containing the installer and other software for the Debian Linux operating system. The files in this directory are specifically for the AMD64 architecture. There's also a 32-bit version as well. The files here are in Jigdo format. Use Jigdo tools to download the contents of the complete ISO image files from what's here and a normal Debian mirror. You should end up with an exact copy of each ISO image as though you downloaded it via HTTP or FTP. And then goes into more details about how this works, how you actually use it, and yeah. So if all the DVD files are available for free online, who in their right mind is going to pay $20 to just have them printed and sent to them? This isn't including uh, shipping. Also, the different US states do sales tax differently, so tax isn't listed here either. You guys are weird. I don't know why you do that. Uh, so it's probably like closer to $25, $30. Why would you do that? What What is the point? Well, there's actually a really good point. Anybody watching this video at 720p, even 480p, 
this is probably not a service for you. You don't have the fastest connection out there, but it's a reasonably usable connection. You could download a multiple gigabyte ISO. You can download some updates to your repos. It's probably going to take quite a bit of time, but you can do it in a reasonable amount of time. That's not the case for everyone out there. This service we've been looking at is just focused on the United States. And in the United States, you may not know this if you live in a big city, a small city, a town, a village, a place where people generally live. There are people that still only have access to dial-up. This is data from 2019, and it's obviously going down, but there are still people that only have dial-up in the US. There are still so many people that there are lists from 2022 of the best dial-up providers. I didn't think I would say best and dial-up in 2023, but here they are. So let's do a bit of quick maths and be super nice and use Puppy Linux. So Puppy Linux has an ISO that's around 400 megabytes. I'm just gonna round the numbers to make things easier. And with a 56K modem running at absolute full capacity, which will never really happen on the internet due to, you know, servers and distance and ping, but let's just say it's running at the full 56K. It will take you an hour to download approximately 200 meg. Two hours just to download Puppy Linux. And Puppy Linux is an intentionally small Linux distro. This can get a lot worse if you want to use something like Ubuntu, for example. The latest Ubuntu LTS is about 3.6 gigabytes. So about 18 hours just to download the ISO. Not even do a system update. The absolute bare minimum just to have a working system. But let's be a little bit nicer. Let's say you don't only have dial-up, you have a satellite available. But this satellite connection has an extreme data cap and you can't really justify using this downloading packages, downloading ISOs. You just want something you can easily install offline. Or you might be in a far worse state. You're in an area where they do have electricity, maybe not, you know, all of the time, but do have electricity, but internet is a little bit harder to come by. Maybe it's only available at schools and libraries, but it's not really common to have internet in your home. Excluding edge cases like Japan and Korea, which are really well-off countries, this is exactly why a lot of areas of the world still have net cafes as a common thing. They don't really exist in Australia. There's like maybe one or two in my entire state and they're hidden down some random alley. But there are many areas where using a net cafe might be the only way that you can reasonably get online. So while this might seem completely pointless to internet natives, internet dwellers, whichever term you want to be using for a service like this to be existing, it's not pointless for a lot of people out there. For many people, this might be the only reasonable way to get your hands on Linux or get your hands on Linux in a reasonable length of time to justify actually doing so. Now, I've just been looking at the CDs and DVDs. There is also USB thumbsticks as well, and many of the services out there don't even offer CDs, only offer it as a thumb drive. And the other people this is made for is for the dumb YouTubers who ask their audience really dumb questions. Should I buy a 19 DVD collection of the Debian, I spelt it wrong, a Debian 11.5 archive for the sake of a bit. 36% saying yes, 25% saying of course you should, and 39% saying send me the money instead. Is this a fairly worded poll? No, absolutely not. But why would it be? I was asking about buying 19 Debian DVDs. Of course it's not gonna be serious. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. 
down below. If you've been using Linux for, you know, 10 plus years, let me know what it was like getting Linux CDs in magazines, in the mail, and let me know if you still have any of them and what the first distro you ever used actually was. I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here so I can buy 19 Debian DVDs, uh, check out my Patreon scrubs. The will pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.